Hello everyone, welcome back to class number four of the RVC models. We are going to be talking about the model equilibrium and the dynamic equations now. As I mentioned, this is a series of tutorials where we are estimating a DSG model. In this case, it's a neoclassic model, the RVC. And we are going to be writing all these equations then in the software. We are going to be doing that in the next episode. For this tutorial, it's very important that you pay attention because these are the dynamic equations that are going to be then um, the step that we're going to be writing everything down in the software. There's going to be a link in the description where you can find the outline of the course. So you can click in there and see all the available episodes. They are all in order, in a progressive order. So you can watch them um, one by one. And also, there's going to be a link where you can download for free um, the, the slides that I'm using today because it's important that you have this in order to be able to write it down in the software. So let's begin now then talking about what is the model equilibrium and what are going to be the dynamic equations in the model. So talking about a competitive equilibrium in the real business cycle model is talking about the following. The competitive equilibrium of the model implies finding a sequence of the variables consumption, leisure, investments, when we are talking about families, and also about capital and hours worked, and a sequence of prices, this is very important, returns and wages, which are going to satisfy the following conditions. The households are going to maximize their utility choosing the optimum level of consumption and leisure given the prices, wages, and returns. So there's going to be, remember, there's going to be a shock in the model that is a productivity shock that's going to have an impact on the variables. So that's going to change the prices of returns and of wages. So now households need to make a new decision. So given these prices, given the salaries and the returns, they need to decide how much they're going to consume and how much are they going to rest. So that's what we are talking about when we are reaching to a competitive equilibrium. And also the firms in the economy are going to maximize their profits, choosing the optimum level of labor and capital to demand, given the salaries and the returns. So that's, again, the same thing. There's a shock. There's going to be new wages and returns. And now the firms need to decide optimally how are they going to be maximizing their profits. So the last thing is the most important as well is that the feasibility condition of the economy holds. We have here the total output that is being produced in our economy is coming from consumption, goods, and investments. So this is going to be holding. Now we're going to go into the board and we're going to write all the dynamic equations that define our real business cycle model. As I mentioned earlier, these are the equations that we are going to be writing in the software. So it's very important that you keep track of this. Let's write the first equation that is going to be the output, the total output in the economy. And then it's coming consumption and investment. That's going to be our first dynamic equation. I'm going to call this number one. Recall from uh, the video that we have watched about the households, we have, let's define what consumption is. We need to define each of these variables. So remember that we're going to have consumption. We have the Euler equation. I'm going to type CT plus one. This dynamic equation came from the second tutorial where we have solved for the household a maximization problem. So we have beta um, and then we have RT plus one plus one minus the depreciation rate. That is going to be the second dynamic equation that we have in our model. Let's see now where we can gather investment from. Remember also from the second tutorial, from the second class that we had defined the way that capital evolves. And here is where we'll get investments. We can solve for investments from this um, equation because remember here we've got that investments, capital tomorrow was equal to investments plus the capital that we have today minus the depreciation rate. So we are going to call this equation, equation number three. The next equation then that we can write is for example, from the, from the households as well, which is going to be the hours supplied. 
So the hours supplied, remember from our second video, it was wages minus Scamma consumption over WT again. And this is what we're going to call equation number four. Let's now move into the equation number five. We can we need to define what the returns are. We obtain the returns from the video number three, where we talked about the firms. This is going to be the equation that defines returns, and it's going to be alpha yt over kt. We're going to call this equation number five. Now let's go to the next one that we need, that is wages. That's going to be also coming from the third video, which is the video of the firms. It's one minus alpha over yt, times, sorry, times yt over ht. This we are going to call equation number six. Moving next, we need to define output. What is, what is the production function? And also we have talked about this production function in video number three, when we talked about the firms. So yt, we need to define it. It's going to be equal to at, which that was the technology, kt times alpha. And then this is going to be ht one minus alpha. And this is going to be equation seven. And finally, we have AT here, so we need to define an equation for AT as well. Otherwise, this model is not going to be defined properly. Remember, we mentioned that AT, the technology, is going to follow um, an R1 process. So I'm going to write this, the following equation, which is going to define the productivity. It's going to follow logarithm. So the productivity tomorrow. It's going to follow the following. It's this is a row, which is just showing the persistence and the logarithm of the technology times, uh, sorry, plus the error term. So this is going to be equation number eight. It's very important that we get the following. Let me grab the color red now and let's write the following. These are the equations. We have eight equations and we need to have make sure that we have defined all of our variables that we have in the model. We have weight T, we have consumption, we have investments, we have capital, we have wages, we have hours worked, we have the returns, and we have the productivity. So we are talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight variables, and we have eight equations. So there's one equation defining each variable. This is very important because otherwise you're going to have more equations than variables, or you're going to have more variables than equations. Um, this is something that Stata is going to give you an error, of course, because you are including, for example, let's suppose that you include government here, consumption plus investment plus government. In that case, then you would need to include an equation, which would be, for example, equation nine. I don't have space, but let's suppose government. And then you will have to provide something that is going to be defining government. Otherwise, your model is going to give you an error. It's going to say, okay, you have governments, but you know where is the equation that is defining the behavior of the government? So I think that's going to answer a big uh, part of the questions then. When you have errors in Stata, you need to make sure this, that we got one equation, dynamic equation, defining each, um, each of the variables that we're including in the model. Before I forget, let's remove government from equation one. And now let's talk about parameters. We already talked about the equations and each of the variables that we have in the model, but also we have parameters. We have here the delta, which was the depreciation rate. We have beta, which is the intertemporal discount factor. We have the gamma, which that was for the uh, parameter of the leisure, leisure share parameter. 
we have the alpha uh, that the alpha was coming from the production function that's the input share and then we have uh, the raw here so there are four four parameters five in total but four parameters that we will need to calibrate that are beta the delta the gamma and alpha so these are parameters that we need to calibrate and we are going to talk about calibration on the next tutorial and then we have the following that is the raw that I, this is the persistence of the shock of the technology shock yes if the persistence is is very high uh, this value will be between 0 and 1 uh, if the persistence is high then that means that the technology shock will have a strong um, a strong impact then in the over time in the variable and this is something that we will estimate this parameter is going to be estimated in our model okay so as a summary we have eight equations for the eight variables that we have in the model we have some parameters that we need to calibrate and also we have one parameter that is the raw which is the persistence of the technology shock which will be estimated so that's going to be all for today that's going to be all the content that we're going to be covering this is very important as i mentioned already that you download the pdf because it's going to include all the dynamic equations that you are going to need when we need to write them in the software in Stata. I'm going to show you how that would look like. Let me close that. So these are going to be the dynamic equations that you can download this PDF for free. And we are going to be writing then in the next tutorial, we're going to be writing all these dynamic equations in the software. I hope this tutorial was useful. I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel to get notified of my next tutorials that are coming. We're going to be in the next tutorial uh, writing down all the dynamic equations in the software and I'm going to be talking on the other tutorials later. I'm going to be talking about the data that we're going to be using, what are the observable variables in the model, what are the unobserved variables in the model, how are we going to do the calibration of the parameters, and also we have to talk about data filtering and then we're going to get into steady states. We're going to get into impulse response functions and out of sample forecasting. So once again, thank you very much for watching and take care. Thank you.